Hello students, I am Ishan Trivedi. Welcome you in this video lecture series. In this session, I am going to discuss about travel demand functions. Before that, in this session, I am going to cover up the various concepts of travel demand functions, then sequential and simultaneous models, then travel demand, aggregate and disaggregate approach, and at last, tree generating models. So let us start with the travel demand functions. Here, the travel demand is an economical activity and it can be understood by the reference to well-known economic principle dealing with the consumer choice behavior in relation to common goods. Here, this travel demand function has been correlate with the consumer choice with terms of price of the product. Again, I am repeating, here the travel demand function is been elaborated by giving the principles of consumer choice behavior in relation to common goods. Means, if I have a purchase of quantities Q1, Q2 up to Qn of n items of goods which are prices at P1, P2 up to Pn respectively involves a certain level of utility and which can be represented by utility in various quantities or utility in terms of their functions. Here these are Q1, Q2 up to QA. And the consumer would likely to maximize this utility which has been derived by the purchasing a combination of goods. And this each of certain quantity subjected to his budget or you can say I will spend money less than what I have make a budget for purchasing the items or n number of items and that's why he would like to maximize this Q1, Q2, Q3 which are subjected to the summation of that number of items or you can say quantities and prices of each items and which will be less than the budget and that's why the summation of values from P1, Q1 to Pn, Qn which has to be less than the budget or you can say which has to be less than total budget and this function is also related to the travel demand function. Here the quantity of ith item that I have consumed for this qi quantity which can be considered as a demand function. So this qn quantity is considered as a demand function. Now from quantity of n item now I am shifting as a demand function and I am relating the quantity of this price goods and the income level. So the quantity of items which are associated with the prices of these different quantities. Means if I have purchased 10 different items and with the different prices then the number of quantity which are related to or which are associated with the prices of that individual item and here what I am implying, I am implying the demand function because as I said that QI is nothing but a derived design function. Here what I am getting here I am getting that quantity of an item which has been function of demand function of prices P1, P2 up to Pn. If I simplify this function then it deals with the travel demand function and that is Qn is equal to Dn into PSA means that Dn is a function of P, S and A where this Qn is derived for travel for purpose and then Dn is demand function, P is a vector including a pricing attribute of travel demand for example there are various factors for example price, travel time, comfort and safety as well and at last S is 
socio economic factor here a determines the activity of system variable so here the travel demand is a function of again that is vector of pricing attributes s stands for socio economic factor and a is a part of activity system variable here this price and goods behavior is been associated with the travel and the prices and various factors here the travel demand purpose is been associated with these three factors and demand function here the trip making function as is a commonly used by the traffic engineer is of the form of similar of this one and that is tin jkr is equal to di n jkr which has been associated with the function of lsa here tin jkr is the total number of trips for the purpose n there are there are n purposes for the trips and which has been related with the origin i and destination j and that's why here i j k r where k stands for mode and r stands for route that i will opt and this entire things are nothing but trip generating models here d i n j k r is the demand function l stands for level of service s stands for socio economic factor and a stands for activity system variable here one relationship has been shown that is of number of trips or you can say volume of trip and the prices here a linear demand function for travel is been shown the pair of origin and destination to various points and at a specific time of a day and for a particular purpose such as demand function is useful for predicting travel over a wide range of conditions this demand function assume a particular level and distribution of income or population or you can say socio economic characteristics as well it is an aggregate demand curve that representing the volume of trips demanded at different prices by a group of traveler as i said functionally if i tell you then q is equal to alpha minus beta p where q stands for quantity of trips p stands for price and alpha and beta are constant demand parameters so here this is the theory of travel demand function based on this concept let us study the sequential and simultaneous models as i said the trip making behavior consists of four stages trip frequency destination mode route and the other choices that we made in this sequential models the trip making behavior is to built up in a sequential order and each travel decision made independently of each other in this simultaneous models all the attributes of travel choices are considered together in sequential demand analysis it has been assumed that the, all the decisions are made in the strict sequence in the decision making process i have already discussed about these four sequences and usually the sequential demand analysis is used to determine the travel demand here one attempt has been made to illustrate the logic of travel demand analysis procedure but it also gives the names of different classes of models that used mathematically to describe each decision that we are making in different phases of this analytical procedure so we will understand how this model has been work out so based on the input conditions these conditions are socio economic needs socio economic status and network condition and there are various input variables these are socio economic variables and network variables based on that i have trip related decision making model and travel demand modeling among of all these socio economic needs what i have to do i have to take decision to travel and for that i have 
a model that is called tree generation model after to have a decision to travel i have the destination choice and for that i have the model that is called trip distribution model once i have decided the destination i will take the different modes and for various modes i have the mode choice model or you can say model split analysis then after choosing a mode of travel what i'll have i'll have to opt the route to reach that particular destination and for that route choices i have traffic assignment models so for each of the purpose i have set travel demand modeling and these are trip generating model trip distribution model model ch choice or you can say mode choice or model split model and traffic assignment models and from that what i'll do i'll materialize those strips this can be a physical form in terms of vehicular or non vehicular and for that i have to provide the links for the network so here this is the basic structure of travel demand process and further in detail i will discuss about the various models that has been elaborated here here for a trip generating model there are two approaches that is aggregate and disaggregate approaches so let us study these approaches two basic approaches for developing the models for estimation of trip production and trip attractions are aggregate approach and disaggregate approach this trip production and trip attraction is been associated with trip generating models this trip production and attraction will be discussed in further lectures so you will get in detail idea about trip production and attraction the aggregate models deals with the estimation of travel of a group of travelers and these aggregate models deals with the smallest decision making unit that individual traveler will take for the journey so let us first discuss about aggregate approach this develops the relationship between the trip production and attraction with appropriate independent variables these variables implies at zonal level now using the regression analysis i will have the basic idea about these zonal basic trips and it is one of the principal advantage of this model and it is very simple here the disadvantage of this approach is that it is not behavioral in nature and may be valid for the zonal schemes only and you cannot imply to other zone and that is its limitation here the aggregate refers to the grouping of data and various patterns the density variable for example you can say total number of household per residential acre area these are the typical aggregate measures now here i am talking about this aggregate approach this is based on the development of equation describing the independent variables on a trip making as a basic unit for the trip production analysis particularly household usually are considered as a basic source of travel and the regression analysis or you can say category analysis are used for the development of these aggregate models if i'm talking about the advantages of this these aggregate approaches then it reflects the trip makers true behavior it provides more efficient estimation of parameters at a smaller computational cost there is a greater degree of transferability potential of models from one data of the different area to another area the disaggregate household models are much more likely to be stable over the period of time and thus it provides more reliable estimate for the future year and that is one of the key tool for demand forecasting so in a short sweet summary if i want to understand this aggregate and disaggregate approach then you can correlate this with trip generation model formulation i have the trip generation models and these are trip purpose and trip attraction 
for trip production particularly i have this aggregate and disaggregate approach aggregate approach is related to the zonal trips and zonal characteristics which implies to that particular zone only and this model cannot opt for the other zone and by applying these regression techniques i'll get the futuristic demand similarly for this aggregate approach what i have i have those trips which are related to basic units and these are public or individual and particularly i told you that is household and from that what i'll get i'll get two different techniques that is regression analysis and i'll the cross check those data as by category analysis as well so this is what the aggregate and disaggregate approach for particularly trip production so i'm ending this session here i hope you have learned these concepts thanks for watching this video